And once again, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Good evening if you are watching us from the Far East or Australia. And welcome to this Alan & Heath webinar. My name is Nick Beretta. I'm head of product at Alan & Heath. And I have the pleasure today to kick off the All Install virtual conference uh, with this session on touch control for audio systems. And I hope you can enjoy other topics in our three-day program so you can check out the full schedule uh, on our website. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom webinar interface, so please use it to send in any question you might have throughout the webinar. Don't wait until the end. Uh, my colleague Val Gilbert will be uh, addressing some of the questions real time, and we will pick up as many questions as we can in a Q&A session uh, at the end of the webinar. Now, I'm sure that most of you have heard of Alan Heath already, but you might associate Alan Heath with uh, the, the brand Alan Heath with something like this, a mixing console at a live event. And that's for sure a, a big part of, uh, of what we do, uh, live consoles and live mixes. But actually, Alan Heath has been designing dedicated installation products for over 20 years. IDR matrix processors are still at the heart of audio systems for clients, including uh, global banks, blue chip headquarters and government facilities, uh, universities and, and theme parks um, all around the globe. And more recently, we have launched AHM64, which is a new uh, matrix processor with 96 kilohertz FPGA technology. And we have extended our DLive uh, and Avantis mixing systems into permanent installation allowing multi-purpose venues, for example, to handle everything from background music and source selection or conferences to a full orchestral performance uh, throughout a single system and a single, a single vendor. And part of our success has been in breaking down the components uh, of an audio system and addressing each of these uh, needs and requirements separately. So we have uh, a range of uh, processing engines uh, other vendors might call them um, processors or cores, uh, but the bottom line is that that is the engine where all of the processing and routing happens. We have um, the DM and CDM range from, from the DLI family and the AHM64 matrix processor uh, as an example. Then we have a range of I.O. options, so I.O. expanders, input and output expanders that you can network or put around a venue uh, wherever it's required, uh, Dante expanders and audio networking cards and interfaces if you want to interface with other protocols. And we, we, we will have uh, a couple of sessions uh, during the All Install conference on, on this topic specifically and on our everything I.O. Uh, ecosystem. And then we have uh, different control options. For any audio system, you have different control options. And these can be uh, can take different forms. So we'll, we'll have a look at uh, what uh, control options you might normally have for your audio system. And typically, many vendors, many manufacturers offer some, some degree of hardware control for an audio system. This can be a full control surface, like a mixing console, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it could be something like uh, our IP remote controllers, IP8 with faders, IP6 with rotaries, the single gang wall mount uh, IP1 wall plate. And all of these are PoE powered, uh, TCP IP compliance, so fully networkable, it's standard TCP IP control data. And they can be used to control any of our Avantis DLive or AHM systems. And once again, uh, my colleague uh, Val Gilbert and Martin Vikirk will run a session on IP remote controllers uh, later in our schedule. So what other forms of control uh, would you normally have for an audio system? You can have third party control systems, uh, particularly if you want to integrate with an existing or, or larger control system, perhaps with a, with a wider scope. So not just controlling the audio, but controlling the air conditioning, controlling the video sources and the lights in the building, you might want to opt for um, a dedicated control system. Uh, some of the leading manufacturers, uh, Extron, Crestron, AMX, uh, and there's obviously more than that. Uh, but for some of these um, manufacturers, we do offer drivers or modules for our products. 
that you can use as a starting point or template. So you can, you can check out the third party control page on our website, you will find drivers and modules for, uh, for most of our digital products. Uh, and again, Martin and Ara from Crestron will run a session uh, later today and, and tomorrow on um, third party control for our audio systems. But sometimes all you need to control is uh, the, the audio sy system itself and perhaps a couple of uh, simple uh, comments that you want to send to other equipment. So maybe you want to switch on a projector or um, switch the source of a video switcher. And most commercial audio brands, again, offer a solution for that too. So if you don't want to rely on a third party dedicated control system, um, lots of audio vendors will give you uh, a software app and application to control their audio system uh, directly. The solution from Allen and Heath is called uh, Custom Control, and we will see today how we can program an interface with, with Custom Control and what makes it unique compared to uh, other solutions on the market. And by the way, on the left of this slide is our new CC10 10-inch touch panel. Uh, you can also see the 10-inch and 7-inch on, on the back of my shoulder over there. So rest with us until the end of the presentation if you want to know a bit more about these new uh, touch panels and what they can, uh, they can offer for you. So Custom Control is a customizable uh, cross-platform uh, control app uh, providing uh, elegant bespoke control over Allen Heath installed audio systems be it uh, an Avantis, a DLive, or an AHM64. And as I said, what is unique compared to other uh, solutions on the market? Uh, you, you probably know if you have uh, um, uh, installed DSP processors or other mixing consoles uh, from other vendors that these um, control apps or customizable control apps are, um, are not unique, that, that pretty much every vendor offers something like that. However, what makes custom control particularly attractive to system integrators is to start with the ability to freely design multiple user interfaces tailored to different user types, user levels, and or different device types. So for example, a bartender can be presented with a simple phone interface, while the AV operator of a venue can access uh, levels and, and routing on their tablet, uh, and maybe more comprehensive control when using their laptop. So depending on the device type that they, they're using, they can be presented with a different uh, interface. The other key aspect of custom control is that the um, uh, any device uh, running the custom control app, which is a free app, uh, any device can log into the system with a given uh, user profile and password if, if one is set at which point the correct user interface is instantly downloaded and displayed on the device. Uh, so this allows for both kiosk applications where you have a dedicated device in place, but also bring your own device uh, implementation. Since the configuration is basically deployed on demand, you don't need to install a configuration or a user interface file on the mobile device you only need the free custom control app, which you can get from the uh, Google Play Store or App Store or download from our website. And once you log into the system with your credentials, the interface is automatically uh, deployed. And this is particularly interesting because after a year of um, uh, being in a pandemic and, and COVID mitigation in buildings and office spaces and educational spaces, we found that bring your own device is becoming more and more important because a lot of the time um, uh, system admins wants to want to avoid the use of shared touch surfaces and opt for a bring your own device solution instead where anyone with a phone or a tablet if they have access to the to the correct uh, wi-fi network and with the correct user credentials can potentially control the audio system uh, and of course users can be uh, password protected inside the uh, custom control app and uh, matrix processor as well. The, the other uh, big advantage of custom control is that it's truly a multi-platform. Uh, so this is an element I'd strongly encourage you to investigate if, if you're researching alternative touch control solutions for other vendors, uh, make sure that they can run on as many different devices as, as possible. 
Uh, so custom control supports Mac OS, Windows operating systems, including Windows tablets, Android, iOS on both uh, iPad and uh, iPhone. So how do you design an interface with, uh, with custom control? Uh, you use the custom control editor, which is again, a free tool you can download from, from our website. And what I'll do now is I'll um, uh, briefly share custom control uh, editor uh, so that we can have a quick look at how we can um, create an interface and uh, deploy it in, in our audio system. So this is, this is the start screen of custom control editor. As you can see, I have three options. And just to give you uh, an idea of how, how we can build an interface, I'll create a new one to start with. Uh, you can see in this configuration, I have one single interface. We'll see later how we can add um, uh, multiple interfaces uh, to a single configuration. If, if I double click on the interface or layout, as we call it in custom control, I have access to my um, uh, editor panel. So at this point, I can start dragging into my interface different objects like uh, rotaries, faders, buttons. Uh, or perhaps uh, an image. So this could be an image that I want to use as a company logo, for example, uh, or uh, perhaps a background image that I want to use in my interface. So I can, on the right side, I have all of the properties for my, uh, for my object. I can click on the plus button uh, to add a new, um, a new graphic, a new image in my project. Uh, and again, I have some options on the, uh, on the top where I can, um, I need to resize my window to, to make sure I see all the controls. Uh, so the options on the top to, for example, stretch the, the background to the full extent of uh, width and height for my, for my interface. Uh, and that's my background. I can now drag in more objects. Uh, for example, a tab container, uh, which again, I can stretch to the full height and width if I wish to do so, or it could be just sitting as, as, uh, in uh, uh, half of my interface. So tab container basically gives me different tabs. Uh, so I can create, uh, I can put in uh, multiple controls uh, and create tabs for different uses or different uh, rooms in a, in a hospitality venue, uh, for example. I can rename some of these. Uh, I can choose how many tabs I want to use. So if I only uh, need two and up to 10 tabs uh, in, a, in an interface, I can recolor the tabs use custom images for the tabs and, and all of that. Uh, so once I've done that, uh, let's start dragging in some of the controls, for example, a button. And on the right side, again, I can choose all of my properties and, and size, font for the text, if I want to add some text to the button, uh, the color, but also the, the style of the image. So again, I can add custom uh, graphics for my, uh, for my buttons or faders or rotaries. Uh, or I can choose from one of the uh, uh, themes that we have included in custom control. Uh, so for example, uh, I like theme four and I select this button here. Uh, I want to rescale it. And again, I have options to um, um, basically stick to a grid. So you can use, um, you can visualize the grid appear. You can select how big the grid is and whether you want to uh, snap uh, to the grid or, or not. Uh, once I have this, this button here, again, I selected my um, off image. I need to select the on image to go with it as well. So if you were to use custom graphics, you could select uh, both images uh, from, um, from a custom picture. Uh, and then I have to choose what function I want this to control. You can see on the right side, I have a number of functions, including mutes, preset recalls, paging. So a button to uh, page a message to multiple zones at the same time. Uh, a mute of a cross point. So basically enabling or disabling this uh, channel I select to uh, a specific destination, a specific zone or, or send. And other functions like level up and down uh, for volume control. Uh, so I'll, I'll stay with a mute and I can select which channel uh, I'm effectively muting with the interface. Is it an input or a zone in the case of AHM64 and the channel number at the, at the bottom. So that's my mute button configured. I can uh, do the same with a rotary control. I can do the same with uh, a fader. Uh, once again, I can uh, rescale the fader. I can choose any um, style I want or um, add a custom image. 
Uh, I'll stay with theme four in this case. And again, what uh, I want to control with this fader. So uh, and if I want to display the scale uh, at the bottom of the fader graphic or not. Uh, so in this case, uh, I want to control input number one. And now I have a mute and a fader for input number one. Some of the other controls you have available uh, include meters. Uh, so with the meters, again, you could, you could have a custom graphic for the meter as well. So uh, perhaps uh, I want to use a meter with segments uh, and that's what uh, you, can, you can import in custom control and create your own, uh, your own meter. We have the chromatic meter, which is a single LED meter that we've developed for the SQ range of mixers. It's also available in custom control. Uh, we have rotaries as a set, and we have dynamic labels. So we have, you can have text that actually follows the, the name of a channel uh, or the name of a preset in, uh, in your AHM processor or, uh, or DLive mixer. Uh, so that's just to give you an idea of um, how to build an interface. Once you've built that interface, you can quickly test it by pressing the play button. Uh, you can obviously rescale these uh, to simulate any device size. Uh, and indeed, you can choose in the properties of the layout to lock it to a specific ratio or, or interface. Um, you can also decide to upload these configuration to the um, processor, to the mixing system. So in that case, you can select your uh, target unit, target device, upload the configuration, and then essentially every device running the custom control app will be able to uh, access that configuration. So before we do that, I'll just switch briefly to um, another uh, project. Uh, and that's just to show you uh, what else you can do with, with custom control in terms of uh, other options to have multiple uh, control interfaces within the same system. So in this example, I have uh, three, four different layouts, th four different user interfaces. And you will see that some of these have different properties uh, compared to the others. So for example, if I start with a blue one, this blue interface is actually called blue. And users, I have assigned the user's uh, admin, the user admin to uh, run that interface. And you can see that in the, in the properties of that layout, that I've said that this user interface should be used for phone and tablet devices only, so not for desktop devices. It should only work in landscape uh, mode, so uh, you can have it so that it, the interface will rotate with the device if you wish to do so. But particularly if you're using custom graphics and company logos, you might not want that to happen so that it doesn't rescale graphics and objects um, uh, in a manner you, you, don't, uh, you don't wish to use. Uh, and again, I have another option here, which is whether I want this interface to work with any of the presets uh, in my uh, AHM64 in this case, or whether I want this interface only to work with specific presets, which is quite an advanced feature. It means that essentially you can change the interface presented to the user, depending on what preset, what scene or snapshot uh, the system is currently running. So if you have different types of events, you could have a different interface presented to the user for that specific event type. And at the bottom, as I said, you can lock the aspect ratio if you, if you wish to do so. So that's one interface that I have um, available in my system for the user admin. Uh, but you can see that I have other ones available. For example, this, uh, this one called uh, demo tablet. Uh, this one says user meeting. So the user meeting uh, when logging in with a desktop or tablet will be presented with, uh, with this interface. Uh, I have an error message here. Basically it says, uh, look, uh, there are these uh, properties are also uh, defined in another layout. And obviously why is the error there? It's because the system needs to understand uh, what unique uh, interface to present to, um, uh, to a user when they log in. So you can only have uh, a set of, uh, of interfaces for each particular combination of your criteria. Another interface that I have here on the right is this one for the user theater. Uh, this one would work on desktop and tablet devices. And again, in this one, if I double click on it, you'll see that I have some more granular uh, levels and mutes and uh, preset control of the theater space. So all of my main front fills, delays, stacks, uh, and, uh, and so on. So back to the layout manager. Uh, 
uh, again, in my meeting interface, you can see that I, I use the tab container uh, because perhaps I want to control not just the meeting area, uh, but a couple of other areas of the building. It could be spaces in the ground floor, so my lobby and lounge with uh, music source selection, uh, or maybe the, the restaurant areas where, again, I can select music source for each of the zones and control the level. And again, uh, my last interface in, in this project is uh, a very simple interface with a source selector and a single fader, uh, and that's for uh, phone uh, devices when logging in with the user uh, meeting. So as you can see, I have two different interfaces for uh, a meeting user. In, in one case, when logging in with a desktop or tablet, you will have uh, a larger interface. When logging in with a phone, you will have a much more simplified uh, interface. And I can actually demonstrate uh, some, of, uh, some of that. Because, for example, uh, I have uh, custom control on my phone. And this one is um, actually running that very same interface that you can see on the screen. Uh, so I have one fader uh, control for the level and one um, source selection, uh, essentially, to select my, my sources. So I can select uh, the PC audio or Spotify, DVD, uh, any music source that way. Uh, on the right here, I have the same interface, but running on an iPad. And in this case, I have more granular control with the other meeting uh, interface that we set up in custom control. And on my left, I have the two uh, touch panels, CC10 and CC7. Uh, which I logged in this morning as the admin user, and therefore I'm visualizing the uh, the blue interface uh, from the blue layout from my uh, custom control uh, configuration. Uh, so again, that's to give you um, a flavor of how custom control works. Uh, and now I go back briefly to my uh, presentation uh, because I want to touch on the uh, CC10 and CC. Uh, seven um, touch panels that we have uh, now available. So what are these? They are uh, touch panels pre-configured to run custom control, so a seven inch and a 10 inch. They are PoE powered. They also come with a power supply, but you can run them uh, over PoE. And it's a standard uh, ethernet connection. So fast ethernet. Uh, they have a visa 75 by 75 mils uh, visa mounting points on the back so you can use pretty much any uh, visa accessories uh, accessory on the market to mount them in any in any way you like uh, and they provide basically um, a way of integrating a custom control interface in an elegant uh, touch panel for ahm64 avantis or d live systems in in permanent installation uh, they run the custom control app in what we call kiosk mode, which means that the app has some extra security features so that the user cannot easily tamper with the device or quit the app and change the settings of, of the touch panel. Uh, obviously, for the installer, there is a way of accessing those uh, settings. So the CC7 and CC10 will be available very shortly. We expect to have deliveries uh, later in July. And we also have two accessories available. Uh, one is called the uh, CC SDN stand. So it's a desk stand, which you can also see uh, on, the, on the back uh, on my shoulder. And the BRK, which is a bracket for uh, wall or glass mounting. So it comes with uh, some extra bits like sticky pads and films to, um, uh, if you wish to mount it on a glass uh, surface or window. Uh, okay, so that's the, the CC10 and CC7. Uh, and now I think we are ready to take some of your questions. So my colleague Val has been um, looking at your questions coming in uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, Hi, good morning, Val. Good morning, Nick. Hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to the All Install Week. And I'll happily take your questions. Um, I haven't seen anything come in right yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions shortly. Um, but it was very concise, and those uh, CC screens really open up the possibilities of, of uh, what can be done for, uh, for integration. So just in case you're searching, uh, you'll find the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And we'll just give people a couple of seconds 
to ask any of their questions. I'm seeing some regular faces. So uh, say hi to the guys in Australia. I see uh, Alfonso in Thailand as well. Hi, Alfonso. There are a couple of questions coming in. One is on uh, the uh, CC7, CC10, what operating systems that they're, they're running, uh, which is a good question. Uh, so CC7, CC10, they are Android devices. They run uh, the Android operating system. However, it's a custom version of Android, uh, a custom distribution uh, that we uh, embed in those devices. Uh, and as I said, they are pre-configured to run the custom control app in, in kiosk mode uh, so that they start up with the app um, full screen without any uh, other navigation menu or bar. Uh, and uh, you're locked into the, uh, the custom control environment. Cool. Um, we have a question from Alfonso. So uh, thanks, Alfonso. Um, is M1 uh, Mac supported yet? And he's liking the look of the CC7s and CC10 uh, controllers. So M1 supported, uh, if this question is specifically on custom control editor, uh, I believe it is Alfonso, but I'll double check with the software test department and I'll let you know. Uh, I know that we're testing M1 across our products and, and, and apps. Uh, and we are finding that most of them seem to be compatible. Uh, some MIDI device uh, and, and DJ device, uh, particularly, uh, we are experiencing some issues. But uh, I'll get back to you on, on custom control, Alfonso. Cool. Uh, Andrew Crawford in Australia would like to know, hi, Andrew, um, how many different uh, layouts can you run in one custom control uh, file, essentially, one configuration? It's a good question. Uh, I don't remember top of my head. I believe it's 16, but again, I will I will check the answer for you, Andrew, and, and we'll let you know. Um, it's, uh, uh, again, it, it also depends on how you set the map. You need to specify unique criteria, as you've seen, uh, for the different interfaces. And, and so it also depends on how many users you have available in your system. Uh, and whereas DLive and Avantis allow up to 10 user profiles, AHM64 allows for um, much more than that. So you can have many more user profiles and passwords uh, to allow for more uh, custom control interfaces, if, if you wish. But I'll, I, again, I'll check on the, on the actual limit uh, for the custom control and, uh, and let you know. And incidentally, there's a similar question on how many physical devices you can connect to, uh, to a system in terms of custom control devices. And that really depends on the total number of TCP connections to the, to the system. So anything like an IP controller, so an IP8, IP6, IP1 remote controller will take one TCP connection. Anything like uh, the system manager software for AHM64 or director software for DLive and Avantis will take one TCP connection. And so will any device running custom control or any of our apps. And the, the total number of TCP connections you can have is 40 connections for DLive or Avantis, but we actually increased that limit to 100 connections for AHM64. So that's the theoretical limit on the uh, number of connections. Of course, what happens normally in the real world is that bandwidth limitation, wireless uh, traffic, TCP traffic, uh, can uh, can impact the number of devices you can concurrently run before you reach that theoretical uh, theoretical number. Okay, thank you, Nick. Uh, there's a question from Roel who might be slightly confused, but I'll emphasize a little bit on his question, is whether the wireless connection of custom control is over 4G or 5G. Um, and so uh, probably important to point out that when you're discussing wireless connection, it's within a network, so over Wi-Fi by definition, um, so on local Wi-Fi, but maybe we can um, extend that question a little bit to, uh, could I use custom control remotely if I wanted to in, in another location? Um, and if that was the case, could I even use my uh, 4G phone connection to, to use custom control from a completely different location potentially? Yeah, that's actually a good topic, Val, and, and I know that you and Martin have um, uh, done a couple of videos on on, uh, on this application have, in terms yes. of 
running um, uh, control apps, uh, whether it's uh, the, the DLive director, whether it's a different control app, uh, remotely over the internet uh, with an internet connection. And in that case, you're absolutely right. You could use a 4G or, or 5G connection on a phone uh, to access a control interface that might be potentially in another city altogether, or as in your uh, example uh, that you posted on Facebook, Val, uh, across different countries or, or even continents. Uh, so it is possible. We have a couple of knowledge-based articles on how to... Um, how to configure a system to allow some TCP ports, for example, to travel or to be open uh, to messages coming across the internet. Uh, so that's certainly a possibility. But in terms of the um, average uh, use case of custom control, it would be a Wi-Fi uh, network in a building or wired as well. So the, the touch panels, for example, CC10 and CC7, uh, provide wide connection, so it's a CAT5 uh, connection to the uh, to the audio system. And you can do the same with other devices, Mac, Windows, PC, or you can opt for a, for a wireless Wi-Fi connection. Okay, I have a question related to custom control, which can be quite relevant to uh, perhaps any of the integrators that might be watching us right now. Um, if I've done an install for a client who's specified a custom control design, um, so they want X amount of faders and um, buttons uh, on their custom control layout. Um, how does that work if I want to update things? So if the customer says, oh, we've changed slightly exactly how we want things to be laid out, um, how would I do that either on site or even perhaps remotely? What are the options for updating that? And how does it uh, affect all of the different devices in terms of layouts if I if I only update if I want to update the layouts, no, good question. So the the update is incredibly easy. Uh, what you normally do is if you have the original file because you uh, you uh, design the interface yourself, you can obviously edit that offline uh, in in the office wherever you are, and then you can uh, upload it to the system. And as you upload it, in a matter of uh, uh, a couple of seconds it will be instantly deployed to all of the connected devices. So the devices don't even need to log out and log in again. The new interface uh, with the updates will be presented instantly. There's also the case where you don't have the original uh, design uh, because maybe you, you've been called in to uh, uh, tweak or adapt an interface that was already existing or that someone else has designed originally. And in that case, provided you have the admin password for the uh, for the audio system or the matrix processor, you can actually download the uh, the layout of the configuration file for custom control from the system, edit as you like, and then upload it again uh, with the changes. Sure, that was my follow up question. Actually, was uh, how can I make sure that if I'm an integrator again and I've set everything up for my customer, uh, that my customer doesn't um, wreak havoc through my design by getting into the system themselves and thinking that they can change things um, and how can I make sure that everything's locked in and that they can't um, access anything? Yeah, so again, uh, you, it's um, uh, obviously password man management and user profile management. Uh, some integrators like to uh, lock the system with, a, with an admin password and then only give uh, a certain level of access to the, uh, to the operators and to the, to the end users. Uh, others might choose to leave it completely open for the for the client for the customer to uh, to edit at will. Uh, in either case, uh, it, it really depends on how you set up your uh, your user profiles. And if you want to lock it down with a password, you can do so. Cool. Uh, we have a question from uh, Russell. Thanks for your question, Russell. And please keep those questions in, even if uh, it might seem like something quite obvious. If you want to be sure that you've understood, pop those questions in. Uh, he's wondering. If you were to use custom con control, sorry, um, for setting up monitor mixes, so um, um, maybe a church environment or a school environment, um, what would the cost comparison be? And I know it's kind of a specific question, um, but compared to ME1, um, and could you add them as an alternative or in addition to ME1 uh, for AUX uh, monitoring mix? setups um, and, and how would that integrate? How would that work? You, you certainly could. Uh, however, I would say uh, that the, the, the target, the primary target for the CC screens is definitely permanent installation. Uh, 
Uh, and there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, as Brussels uh, touched on, is the price. So uh, the um, the price for the CC screens will be around the the 1,000 US dollars. So a, a, a little lower than that for the seven inch, a little higher than that for the 10 inch. But that's the ballpark. So you're looking at something which is uh, more expensive than a, than an ME1, uh, but also possibly more expensive than an Android or um, iOS uh, iPad uh, tablet that you can buy um, off the shelf uh, on, on, the, uh, on the market. So why would you want to invest the extra money to run uh, to, to, to buy a CC7 or CC10? Uh, that normally boils down to system integrators liking the option of uh, buying the full system from one single vendor and tested and pre-configured to work with that specific app instead of um, playing around with uh, the, the Android operating system and, and locking down settings and, and things like that. Uh, so custom control can run on any device, as I said, bring your own device, Android, iPads. That might be the preferred option if you want to say, have a couple of mobile devices for um, uh, to, to run your uh, personal monitoring interface for, for an AUX bus. Uh, uh, however, if you want to invest in a CC10, CC7, um, you can you can do so, and that's obviously a, a tested and recommended uh, device from uh, from Alan Heath. Yes, and I, and I think just to add to to what you were saying, there's a lot to be said in terms of integration uh, of having a closed system, so to speak, with with the CC screens, um, where the client does not have access to the operating system of the device, uh, compared to an Android tablet, for example, where they could go in and change settings of the device and things like that. But also, it's a screen that's been um, extensively tested by our R&D uh, to make sure that it can live up to hours of operation um, where the power supply is stable. Um, you don't have to worry about sort of battery life and charging over time because it has been ruggedly tested for the application of being on a wall in a school and it's on all the time and, it, and it's really been designed for that purpose where Android has the benefit of being relatively affordable, but with affordability comes certain um, compromises in terms of quality. And you can buy an Android tablet for under $100 now, but how that Android tablet will perform over time is uh, maybe not a given and might be detrimental to your uh, service to your customer over time. So, so yes, there's a price gap, but it is, um, you know, it, it, do, it does have its its basis in terms of how reliable your installation will be uh, long-term. Okay, so at the moment, I think we've come to most questions. If anyone's got any more questions, now's the time. And just so, uh, as a reminder that uh, obviously we have more sessions coming throughout the day and the next couple of days, uh, so, uh, please check out the full schedule online and you can register for any session uh, from, the, uh, from the website. Uh, and also on the same page, you will find an option to uh, request a one-to-one -one meeting as well. So if you want to discuss uh, specific project requirements, uh, perhaps with the, the, the Alan Heath team in your country or your territory or with the um, US or UK teams uh, from Alan Heath, uh, you have an option to request uh, a meeting or appointment during these three days of uh, the All Install conference. A question from Chan. Uh, will we be able to see the sessions again afterwards if we miss one? Yes, these sessions are all recorded and they will be made available at a later date. Um, I, was, I was going to add to what Nick was saying was that there are other sessions on other topics that it's definitely worth checking out because there's lots of interesting stuff over, the, over these three days. Um, and as you, as you ask, you will be able to watch these possibly at a later date once they've been made available. Um, but also if there's something on this specific webinar that uh, you want to look at again, remember over the next two days, it will be, uh, will be coming up again. Or if you want, if you think, you know, this afternoon of a question that you wanted to ask, join the session tomorrow and, and uh, jump in for the questions as well. Ah, we do have a couple of questions coming in. I thought it might uh, spur some, uh, spur some responses um so gabby's question they are live the webinar sessions are live right now as we speak 
Um, they are not pre-recorded when I say they're recorded. We are currently recording them uh, as we stream and then we will um, uh, edit them and put them online for everyone to, to see. So, um, uh, so technical questions. Um, is it possible to use a CC7 or 10 concurrently with two uh, DSP engines? I suppose you mean with two AHM matrix mixers, for example, how could that work? What would the, the options be? Uh, right, it's, it's a very good question. It is not possible at the very moment. However, it is something that we have considered from the start in the development of custom control. So although it's not possible in the current version, which is 1.1, we hope to add that feature later in terms of targeting different devices on the network uh, from the same user interface uh, and indeed from the same touch panel in this case. Uh, so uh, watch the space. It's something that we'd like to add in uh, in future. Sure. And a question from Prashray in regards to uh, data transfer or the commands specifically. Is there any encryption happening between uh, the devices if they're on a shared network, for example? Um, how can I make sure my, my uh, network is secure? Right, so the, the comments are not encrypted. It is a, a custom proprietary protocol that we use that we call uh, AHNet. Uh, it's not a public protocol. Uh, it's, uh, it's intellectual property of Alan and Heath. And uh, essentially, if you, of course, if you if you do know the the wireless uh, password and key, and you start sniffing packets, you could potentially start uh, reverse engineering the protocol and and sniffing some of the comments out. Uh, it is not very simple, so you will need a, a very deep knowledge of uh, not only TCP/IP but also object-oriented uh, languages as well. Uh, we have some security options, for example, for the. Uh, because we also provide a public uh, protocol for third-party control, which is what the, the Crestron AMX Xtron drivers normally use, or any integrator wishing to control one of our uh, mixing systems uh, through uh, TCP IP data or commons. In that case, we do provide security options where you can load an SSL certificate through the uh, AHM64 or uh, DLive in the next firma release. And, uh, and run a completely secure uh, TSL, SSL port uh, for the third party control. So you have these, these two options. Excellent question. Very good. Okay, well, it, <laughs> more questions coming related um, to our recorded webinars. Um, Okay, so Gabby, just to, to make it clear, um, there's, the, the, these are very much informative webinars, so there's no certification um, related to these webinars, uh, but you do have to watch each individual webinar with the link that you will have received upon uh, registration. So um, although there are three times the same topic over the three days, that's very much so that different people in different time zones have uh, and based on their availability, have access to all of the different topics um, based on different days. So if you couldn't catch this one today, you can still catch it tomorrow if you want to. However, they will be live on each day. So we will be going over the same topic and the same subjects tomorrow, but in a separate uh, live feed. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah, just to add to that, Val, yeah. in terms of certification at the bottom of the all install page uh, or throughout our website, you will also find links to the AHM64 certified training uh, program, which is a number of uh, videos from Val and, uh, and quizzes to get uh, um, uh, a certification for the AHM64 programming. So that's a completely separate uh, program, but it, it's also available and linked at the bottom of the page. And um, I, I uh, noticed that you mentioned level one, two, three. So uh, if it's the Ordinate Dante um, certification level one, two, three that you're after, in that case, yes, we will have some Dante sessions as part of our virtual conference, uh, but for the proper Dante training, you should go and visit the uh, ordinate.com uh, website. Okay, hopefully, Gabby, that answers your questions, but uh, please don't hesitate to reach out on our website if you have any further questions related to the upcoming sessions. Very good. Um, I think that's all of the questions covered, Val. So, uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching our webinar today and participating to our all installed conference. Thank you very much and goodbye.